Hey everybody, this is Stephen Holland. And this is Tyler Kent. With Property Champions Real Estate. And we're here along with you all to show our support for the Dothan Wolves and wish them great success on a winning season. Just as they pursue a championship, we're here to provide championship results with all of your real estate goals. So you can call or text me, Stephen Holland, at 334-797-0134. Or me, Tyler Kent, at 205-413-2304. Go Go Wolves! Wolves. Hello, everyone. Welcome in to the Jed Kennedy Coaches Show brought to you by Property Champions. I am Philip Jordan, the in-studio host and producer for Dothan Wolves Football right here on 96.9 The Legend. Each week, Jerry Coleman and Ken Lambert sit down with Dothan Wolves head coach Jed Kennedy to discuss the Wolves' previous opponent and preview their upcoming game. Tonight, Coach Kennedy will discuss the Wolves making the playoffs, the win over Jeff Davis, and preview tomorrow night's first-round matchup with the Foley Lions on the road. We're going to take a quick break, but when we return, Jerry Coleman and Ken Lambert will be joined by Coach Jed Kennedy right here on 96.9 The Legend. Hey, everybody. This is Stephen Holland with Property Champions Real Estate. And just as every Dothan Wolves player and coach are here to pursue and achieve their championship goals, I'm here to provide and deliver championship results for you with all of your real estate needs. So whether you're buying or selling any type of property anywhere at all, I'm always just a call or text away, so feel free to reach out to me at 334-797-0134. 797-0134. Go Wolves! Welcome everyone to the Jed Kennedy Coaches Show, sponsored by Cham- uh, Property Champions and Coach. Uh, uh, big game again, uh, you know, Friday night. Uh, had, to, had a must win for the Wolves in Montgomery at Crampton Bow, and and coming out, you know, Ken and I got to early enough to watch the warmups, but. You know, we uh, kind of kind of passed over last week, but let's let's talk a little bit about the Opelika must win and then the must win uh, at JD, and we'll get into the JD game with more details, and then what else had to happen Friday night to get ready for tomorrow night's game as as the Wolves travel to Foley to take on the Foley Lions. Yeah, um, you know, obviously, you know, we knew two weeks ago when we played Opelika that that was uh, the way we sold it to our kids was. This is a playoff game for us. If we don't win this game, we're out. If we win, we continue in the discussion of being a playoff team. And that's really what we've talked about all along was each week, um, you know, to continue to hold our own destiny. And, um, you know, obviously everybody knows the tradition of Opelika football. I think I saw the number somewhere. They've qualified for the playoffs like 21 out of 22 years. So a place that certainly got a lot of tradition. And we knew that was going to be a – just, just a tough game. I mean, they they don't give up a lot of points ever. Um, you know, offensively, they haven't quite been as dynamic this year as what they've been. And you know, really thought if we played well, we'd have a chance to win that game. And, man, our defense played just unbelievable. Um, held them under 200 yards of offense. And, um, you know, Raymond Blackman had just an unbelievable night. Was state player of the, the week. Had 240 yards rushing in the game-winning touchdown mm-hmm. with about two minutes left for us to – to, to, to get that 14 to seven win. And then, you know, defense got an awesome stop at the end and, you know, Raymond getting the interception, but uh, you know, what's crazy was, you know, we started four sophomores on defense that night and that was certainly bodes well for the future, but, you know, really, you know, when we, the more big games those kids play and it's only going to help the development of our program down the road. So once we got that win, we kind of knew we were in the same situation that, you know, that, you know, to have a win like that, you can't go down and, you know, and, you know, kind of let your guard down the next week against a, a team like JD and Coach Jones did an awesome job leading the team and they they, they really had a business like approach and came out and played well and you know with that being said you know even if we would have won that game um, if we we needed Prattville to lose to Central or Enterprise to lose to to Robert to to Lee High School so when uh, you know obviously everyone knew that the, the thing I think that helped us was. Central was playing for the region championship and a chance to host all the way through. You know, it, it would have been a little more nervous if, if if it would have been a week where them winning or losing didn't affect their seed, but they needed to win to help their seed. And it was six nothing at halftime, and we watched every, every every second of it, and you know, just happy for our kids. I mean, um, you know, I, I don't think there's a lot of people, um, not only around the city but around the state that you know had the, the the wolves sitting at seven seven and three after the regular season but uh it's just a testament to the kids we have here they've worked extremely hard we've got great assistant coaches who really devour their lives into this and uh you know i'm just happy for the kids there's nothing like playoff football you have to earn your way into it um we talked about all year 
about our region and we thought really there were seven teams that thought they had the firepower to be one of the four playoff teams, and we certainly thought we were. And, um, you know, just happy for the kids to have an opportunity to play a playoff game tomorrow night down in Foley. You know, when we first met back in back in May, I think, Coach, you know, we kind of ran through um, those those schools that were going to make, you know, look, potential of the four of the seven. And then and of those, you know, I think you and Ken and I and Philip even discussed Opelika coming in and Lee coming in and looking at even even though they're going from 6A to 7A, they came in this year with a seven or eight win season last year. You know, so uh, so it with, with like you said, a, a lot of uh, a lot of pride and, and very established programs. But you know, you just mentioned uh, sophomores, and, and and Ken and I have kind of harked on that a lot. I think during game time, when you when you look at you know Ezekiel Moore and TK Knight, and uh, you know, by, I think in Ken and I's eyes, coach, it looked like like maybe after game after after game five, they were juniors because he played so much and done so well and grew so much as a player to where, you know, it's great that we've got him up and come, but, but, but they've got a lot of, they've got a lot of experience now. And who's the other two sophomores? Well, a, a Sim White starts at safety for us. And what's crazy about a Sim is, um, you know, he didn't play football. You know, he started playing football as, as a um, freshman to start with. So he didn't play football in middle school. And, uh, um, you know, Coach White had said, you know, hey, Jed, he's a great athlete. Um, and, and I mean, he's a, I mean, I think I looked, you know, two weeks ago, you know, that Opa like a game, you know, he had 12 tackles and, yeah. um, you know, he's just, he's one of those kids that, I mean, I think he has a chance to be a really, really special football player. So he starts at safety and then we started, um, Israel Richard at defensive line, you know, so we started, you know, two sophomores in the secondary and two sophomores on the defensive line. So, um, you know, certainly bodes well for the future. And as you know, one thing with, you know, the, the, the greatest, the greatest teacher's experience and those kids get better every week. Ezekiel Scott's really, really good. Mm -hmm. He's, uh, he's going to be a scholarship football player. He's a great, uh, great pass rusher, um, plays extremely hard. He's, um, so coachable, um, just a great kid. He's a great teammate and just, uh, just a really easy kid to root for. And, you know, TK, you know, TK started every game for us all year and, you know, started out hot and he kind of had a two two game stretch that weren't what, what didn't play his best football. And man, he came back and played unbelievable, unbelievable against Opelika and, um, you know, had a great pick, you know, that was a um, just unbelievable play and then played awesome and had a pick six against Jeff Davis. So, you know, he's kind of back to got that confidence he had early in the year. And, you know, it's, it's a secondary is a tough position to play in this region and seven, a football, um, especially when you're a sophomore. Yeah, we noticed uh, Friday night they uh, against uh, JD they put Harris out on the wideouts, kind of kind of by himself on an island, and you know, and and, and we kind of talked about it on the radio how well a sim did, you know, kind of covering that were that you know I think I think coach had to make some change a little bit defensively, but but he held his own against a guy that's probably going to be playing on Saturdays before you know yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, as Harris. you know, as you know with Jeff Davis, there's no um, you know shortage of talent and. Mm -hmm. Um, our offensive coaches talked. I mean, he said they, they probably had two corners um, that looked as good as anybody we played all year. Number nine for them had a great game defensively. And um, so it just was, a, you know, just good to go in and get a get a win and, um, you know, give ourselves a – it was always about giving ourselves a chance. And, you know, we, um, you know, had no control over how those teams did Friday night. But, again, I think if, if, if we would have told ourselves before the year that we'd be seven and three um, at the end of – the 10th game, I think we all would have said, if that's the case, we're on pace to uh, build this thing. Well, and let's, let's change over to the offense side. You know, Ken and I, uh, you know, um, Peterson had a great game running the ball. And and I think all year long, and, and we made a few phone calls since we had to drive back from Montgomery to some guys and take it. We can't remember, Coach, when Dothan has had two running backs, two running backs that rushed over 1,000 yards. Yeah, you know, um, I, I just was working on the stats, you know, trying to have that stuff done by the end of the year. And, you know, Tamarian's over 1,100 yards and um, Raymond Blackman's right at 1,100 yards. That's a lot of yards, um, you know, and, uh, you know, certainly we pride ourselves in being able to run the football. But, um, yeah, it's been, uh, you know, it's, it's just good when you have um, any other, you know, you have a kid like, um, Octavius Thomas, who, who's a, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you know, that kid's got division one offers too. And he, he, he does what he has to do in our system and you can take PD out and not fall off at running back. He blocks when we need a block. We've got a sophomore that starts at, at, at wing back. 
um, Zach Walker, mm -hmm. uh, just a, you know, it's by committee. And um, when Carter Davis goes in, he does a great job of managing that offense and the receivers understand their role. And it's just the, I think what's been so awesome to, to watch as a coach is just how, how unselfish those kids are. They don't care who gets the yards, who gets the carries one week. It might be one the next week. It might be the other one. They just, they just want to be part of a good football program. They want to be part of a successful football program and, and just want to do its ass of them each week. It's never how many carries this week or that week. And it's just, you know, again, in our offense, you never quite know what, what, what plays are going to be there that night. It's just a matter of us kind of getting the calls right and getting the ball in the right guy's hands. Well, and I think, uh, uh, you know, offensively has been very fortunate to have three running backs like we do have, because it, it could be, uh, uh, a Peterman night one night next week it, it could be a Blackmon night you know Blackman night one night and then it could be a Thomas so it's it's good to good to have those options out there and with that you, you never see him get tired and, and we've talked about Raymond during the, during the year where he may come out you know twitching an ankle but coach he's like put me back in I'm ready now I'm ready to go back in so yeah and what's crazy is you know we, we you know we obviously pride ourselves in running the football right now that's what um you know fits the skill set that we have and you know, I, I don't know if we've had a ball carrier carry the ball over 20 times all year in a game, which is crazy considering that we're going to carry the ball 45, 50 times a game and that not, you know, one kid has, you know, it's usually, you know, Octavius 6, 7, Raymond 13, 14, PD 13, 14, Zach 6, 7. And I think it's, you know, when, when, when you're being hit from all sides um, offensively, you know, and, and you play defense, it can be hard to defend and, um, you know, just fortunate that we have guys that we can put in there. Yeah. Ken, more questions about uh, Friday night? Or no, I was just going to say congrats on a great year, Coach. I know now you kind of wipe that slate clean and you start over now with the playoffs. But uh, kind of echoing what Jerry was saying and going to Crampton Bowl, that's always one of the places to me that, uh, that the atmosphere, you worry about the kids' focus because it's just such a big place and it yet can be so empty and quiet if there's not a huge crowd there. But the guys took care of business. One thing that I think Jerry and I noticed, uh, like you talked about the athletes on that JD team, but they really had few numbers. I, I believe they had less than 50 kids. And we made the comment, uh, Donald Harris, their, their athlete or running back, such a good player, but my goodness, uh, I, they put him in motion so much. He was in there every play. You knew he was going to fade. There was just no way he was going to last that game. And that happened to a lot of their athletes. They just really tired as it began to, to wind down there. Yeah, football's a you know I'm a believer, especially in seven A and then the large divisions. You know, football's a numbers game, and uh, you know if you look at us, we we have nobody plays both ways. Occasionally, Raymond will take some snaps in the secondary, and it's um, you know it's just you know I think they had you know 46 kids I counted you know as I watched the game and then 19 seniors. So um, you know certainly you know I know that they do a great job up there. You know, and and, and the coach will find a way to get guys out and find a build that we just you know, kind of worry about what we got here and continue to build this thing here in Dalton. Yeah. And and as we said, it was Peterson's night. You know, we never know which one of those guys is going to step up. And I know that uh, they're mostly the fourth quarter. We didn't see Raymond much and just uh, I figured just probably, you know, bumps and bruises and you just try to keep him as fresh as you can. We didn't really see him in the fourth quarter. And uh, the way that Peterson was running the ball, you could tell he just had that forward lean all night long. And he, you could tell he was wanting the ball. Yeah, and it, it's just, you know, it's one of those things where I think that, you know, at that point the game was out of hand and, you know, knew we had a chance to be a playoff team. And, you know, Coach Jones just felt that, you know, let's, uh, you know, no need to get an angle rolled up on and, um, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Well, and I guess uh, I guess a favor for us, and, and we've kind of coined the play because we don't really know what it's called. We've called it the 360 play, but it's basically the play where Raymond just takes and, and just rotates, and, you know, fakes left all the way around and ends up running back up the middle. Uh, is there a, is there a, a play name we should recognize that as? A, the, basically, the it's a play? trap play. You know, we're okay. you know we we've gotten really good at the weak side counter play, which is you know weak side sweep when we spin, yeah. and we've got the weak side. Um, the strong side sweep. So when you're spinning and you're hitting, you have the, the ability to hand the ball off to either outsides. It gives us the ability to have the ball up in the middle. And if you think back to Opelika, that was really a great play for us. And, yes. uh, um, you know, so it's, uh, you know, just the, the spinner, we call it the spinner series. It's okay. a small series and what we do. Um, and there's, you know, six or seven plays that we run off that series. And what you've, as you've noticed, some nights we do it a lot, some nights we don't. And, uh, 
um, you know, it's the one thing about this offense. You just don't know um, what, what that, you know, you kind of have an idea going in, but once you get a feel for it, you kind of just adjust on the fly. Yeah. And I know really you take that opening drive. I think it was 17 plays. You get a field goal out of it, but you kind of set the tone of, Hey, we're going to run the ball. And, and we probably haven't done it as much as we've should, but uh, Jerry and I tried to credit that offensive line uh, mm-hmm. this year, just, just fantastic play. I think they've continued to get better and better. And sometimes it's easy to get kind of hidden and buried down there in the trenches, but those guys have done an outstanding job. Yes, they have. Yeah, and then, you know, we, we commented, I think, Carter Davis a lot uh, on his lead blocking as well Friday night because you could tell he got on the perimeter and, and you know, gave whoever had the ball some options to either cut it up field or try to get outside on the corner. So, uh, it's 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 unusual to see a quarterback, and, and, you know, we've talked about Carter a lot this year about, uh, you know, and, and really all of them. I mean, if they're not getting the ball, they're going to be a lead blocker and, and they participate in the play. You never see them get off it. Coach, just kind of uh, one more question and then and maybe a comment. But, um, you know, you're getting ready to play region play, and in that scenario, you're basically playing the best of the best. And, you know, you're going to you, you match up with the Mobile Ball and County region. And, and, you know, one thing that we saw, and, and I know it comes from both sides, is, is personal foul penalties. You know, we saw some of that. Saturday night, but from the booth where Ken and I was even at, you could see JD kind of egging it on, nagging on, and and you know how do you get you know guys ready for guys? Every penalty counts every game. Don't get me wrong, but definitely in playoffs it even counts more. But I will say this: uh, uh, one of our captains, Jameer uh, Stanyard, uh, just from our booth, coach. Uh, I hope the other coaches picked it up. But as as they, teams were shaking hands, somebody tried to get not out of whack, but just kind of pointed at the scoreboard and things like it. And you saw Jamaris just take him off the field. Just say, hey, <laughs> it's so – I mean, I, I don't mean physically. I just mean he just said, okay, let's let's, let's get where we need to be. Game's over with. And that, that just shows true leadership, I believe. Well, I think, you know, it goes back to one of those true true sayings when you have, you know, I, I mean, average teams are, um, you know, coach-led. And, you know, when, when you have a chance to be a good football team, they're player-led. And that's um, – you know, Jamarius is an unbelievable leader. He's been a great player for us. He's been a um, great leader. He, he embodies what we want as a football program. And that doesn't surprise me at all that he would he would do that. You know, I think that, you know, as you know, when you get to the playoffs, every mistake, every penalty, every everything is magnified. And it's literally the the matter of playing another week or potentially going home. OK, well, Coach, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, let's talk about the Foley Lions in the first playoff round of the Dothan Wolves traveling to Foley Friday night to take on the Lions of Foley. You've been listening to the Jed Kennedy Show, sponsored by Property Champions. Hey, everyone. This is Tyler Kent with Property Champions Real Estate. What are the Dothan Wolves striving for this year? A winning season with championship results. If you're looking to buy or sell any type of real estate, anywhere at all, and you want someone on your team who will not stop until you've achieved your championship results, give me a call or send me a text anytime at all. Again, this is Tyler Kent with Property Champions Real Estate at 205-413-2304. That's 205-413-2304. Go Wolves! Welcome back to the Jed Kennedy Coaches Show, sponsored by Property Champions and Coaches. We get ready to travel Friday. I'm assuming Friday, um, traveling down to Foley to take on the Lions. What did, what um, what have y'all seen so far this year out of the Foley Lions? Well, obviously, um, you, you know you see a very experienced team. Um, they've got you know I think there's a lot of parity in that region. So you see, you know I think that you know I mean a week ago I think people thought Baker was going to be the four seed. They ended up winning you know, in the ninth game of the year and end up being the two seed. So I think a lot of parity, um, you know, it's a, you know, obviously people know it, you know, mobile football is good. Um, got a lot of athletes down there. And, uh, you know, when, when you talk about Foley specifically, you know, they've got a lot of, you know, veteran players. What's crazy is, and will surprise people as they watch them play, they play a lot of people both ways. Um, they have two offensive linemen start at defensive linemen. Their running back is their middle linebacker. Both receivers are their corners. Um, their their blocking back is their is their defensive end. And you know you, you typically don't see that. It comes down to I give you know, their coach credit if he feels you know those folks give them the best opportunity for a chance to, um, to to be successful and they put them out there. So um, you know they've got they've got great skill. Um, they've got three receivers who will be as good as what we've seen. They've got a kid who's a junior who's been offered by Alabama or he's actually committed to Alabama. 
Um, you know, wears jersey number one, very good player. Their quarterback's a three-year starter. When you do your research on him, everyone says the same thing. They said, Coach, he's sneaky good. You know, he doesn't blow you away on film, but he just always makes plays. You don't see him getting sacked a lot. So um, they, they they give up a fair amount of points. Um, I, like, But with that being said, they score a ton, a ton of sports, uh, points, numerous games this year, um, scoring well over 40 points. We have our work cut out for us. Can't give up the big play. Um, with that being said, we got to be physical on offense. We got to do what we do. And, uh, you know, again, you had the I'm not one of those people does a three and a half hour trip affect us. I don't know. We're going to drive halfway. We're going to get a bite to eat. We're going to load up on the bus. We're going to go there. We're going to get dressed. We're going to play a football game. Um, I think sometimes as adults, we think too much of that. You know, so we're I try to keep the schedule as same as um, we can. I think we've been a pretty good road team this year. Um, so we'll follow that same kind of schedule as we head out, head out tomorrow. And, and coach, you know, um, and we've talked earlier, uh, earlier weeks, you know, being in a region and, and being you came from enterprise, you, you saw a lot of the schools that we we faced all year. Kind of knew a little bit about their um, uh, tendencies, some of the key players. What's it like for you and your staff this week to kind of get ready for a team you may have only just saw a little bit of on, on tape? I mean, well, well, I think you know, kind of two parts of that question. The first one is, I think when you play in the region that we play in, you're about ready for anything. I mean, you know. We, we played, I mean, if you think about it, Central ranked in the top five in the state. Auburn ranked in the top five in the state. Um, Enterprise ranked sixth in the state. At one point, Prattville was ranked sixth in the state. At one point, Opelika was ranked sixth in the state. So we've we've seen different kind of seams, uh, schemes, excuse me, and, and certainly seen really, really good players. I think, you know, offensively, you know, a lot of spread is run down there and um, you know, they run the spread. We've seen the spread. You know, I think more, more of the challenges is for us offensively is, you know, figuring out what the heck they're going to do to us offensively. Um, just because we're we're so unique in what we do um, that, you know, you, you just you, you could see a wide variety of things. And you and you, the, the more you guess, the more you're wrong. So we kind of have a plan of how we prepare for that type of situation and and kind of the way we approach our kids is we got to weather the storm the first one or two drives once we figure out how they're playing us and how they're getting lined up we'll be okay offensively but again you can't play yourself out of it the first one or two drives while we're trying to figure that out can yeah coach you, you were talking about points and that's uh, you, some parity in that region down there and it seems that you know you, you see a lot of high scoring teams but also give up and i just look i mean they're they're averaging 33 points a game, but they're giving up 31, and that's over the course of the year. But uh, I guess, do, would you compare them to Baker? I mean, is that a benefit, you think, to be able to play Baker earlier in the year? And, and do you see some similarities? You, you know, I think we played Baker so long ago. You know, I saw a film of Baker two weeks ago, and they looked um, really, really good. Um, you know, I, I, meaning that they looked they, they looked like they played better that night than they did yeah. when they played us. Um, you, you know, it's just, it's just really hard to judge. I mean – you know, I, I think the one thing that I that, that you really can't tell on Phil is how on film is how physical the football is down there. Um, could be really physical, could be kind of physical. You just don't know. Um, you know, and I and I pride ourselves in, in being a physical program and playing a physical brand of football. And um, you know, that that's what we have to do when we go down there. We've got to, you know, they want to spread it out, they want to play seven on seven, they want to throw the ball. We've got to do what we do. And, and when you have teams that do that can and can strike really quickly like they can every possession is just so important for us on offense. And the second thing, I know I said this earlier, we can't give up the big play. I and mean, they got two receivers that are just, they're freaks. They're really, really good. They're, they can run. They are um, they move them all over the field. They, they hand them the ball off. They throw the ball. And again, if you're, if, if you're committed to Alabama as a junior, you can play, you, you can play some football. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, he'll present some problems, but again, we got it. We got to make them work for it. We can't, we, we, we can't give up easy ones. And again, we can't put ourselves, um, meaning our offense can't put our defense in bad positions, you know, by getting behind the chains and, and, and forcing three and outs and those kind of things. Yeah. Uh, of course, with, with us playing on Thursday night, Friday night, it, it gave us a, an opportunity to watch and listen to the other games. Obviously, uh, Jerry and I and Philip were listening to Enterprise and, and watching uh, Central uh, play Pratt Bowl and going back and forth and uh, share with you one of the things that the broadcast team for Central is, is getting toward the end of the game, and they're kind of going over the playoff scenarios. And they mentioned, 
yes, Dothan will travel to Foley. And uh, one of the commentators said, man, can you imagine having to play Dothan in the first round? Whew. And I just thought, well, that's a good, that's a credit. The, I think that they're probably saying that or that's a tough team to prepare for when you haven't seen them. And, and uh, I just thought that that was a credit to, to you and, and to the team of uh, how hard you guys have worked this year. Yeah, it's been, it's been fun. And I think when it gets – I've been fortunate to be able to be a part of a lot of um, playoff games and a lot of really good teams. And um, e each team has has their own uniqueness to it. And this team, you know, they're writing their own story. And, um, you know, it, it, it just gets to – you know, selfishly you want another week with the players, you know, especially the seniors. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it, it's in a – you know, in, in the next Friday night, could be next week, could be two weeks, could be three weeks, whatever – you know, it'll be the last time you get a chance to, you know, to coach those kids and the locker room's a special place and we've got great kids. And, you know, it was funny. One of our kids, you know, the other week said, you know, coach, we'd been told that we couldn't win here, that, that, that you almost start to wonder if you can't for so long. And, um, you know, we told them from day one, you know, believing is seeing. And if you believe it, you know, we'll put ourselves in that position. And again, that's all just a tribute, uh, tribute to these kids. They've worked hard. Um, they had a great off season. Um, invested in the weight room and you know it just we just kept talking about it. it's a it's a it's a daily um process to be better and um there's time to look like we're taking a step back there's time to look like we're taking six six steps forward but i think if if, if you put on our film from the spring football game and you put on our film of, of friday night against um jeff davis you, you would probably say i don't even think that's the same football team and uh you know, it's uh, how hard they're playing and the, the fundamentals have gotten better and the tackling has gotten better and the understanding the system has gotten better. And uh, again, I just could be couldn't be more proud of these kids because ultimately they deserve it. And, um, you know, I just hope that, you know, I, you know, it's been a long time since a playoff game has been run, been, been won between, you know, whether you talk about, you know, you know, Dothan High now the last, you know, in the fourth season or you go back to the old Dothan High or old Northview. Um, just been a long time since uh, uh, they've been able to experience a a, a, a playoff win um, by one of the public schools in town. And, uh, you know, I think that, you know, as hard as our kids have worked, if we go out and play well, um, we, we certainly have the ability to do that. Absolutely. Here. Well, Coach, you know, we we, um, we try to feed as much, or, or Ken does. He's a Twitter expert for the radio station. But <laughs> it seems like a lot of students are planning on making the trip to Foley on Friday. You know, I think, you know, obviously we've had great student sections, um, you know, all year and the, the the parents have been awesome with supporting our kids and, you know, what a what a chance to get on the road. I just think it's always neat when you play somebody you don't normally play, um, you know, to go out and play a, you know, a, a, what's been a, you know, a traditionally, you know, strong team out of the Mobile area fully. I mean, you know, heck, Julio Jones played there. I mean, they've had great players come through there and great tradition and, you know, what, a, what, what an awesome opportunity for us to go down and, um, you know, give our best crack and see if we can, uh, you know, be a team that's talked about for round two of the playoffs. Well, Coach, as always, we appreciate your time, especially on, on days like today and getting ready to travel for uh, tomorrow night for first region round playoffs. And uh, for our listeners, uh, if you can't make the trip, listen to us on 96.9 The Legend. Ken and I will be um, broadcasting it from, from Foley Lions High School. And uh, Philip will be back at Studio Control, kind of, and, and we're going to change up a little bit and have Philip kind of bring in some scores, especially around the region, to kind of keep our listeners updated of, of what other scores are going. I mean, he does at halftime with all the scores around the Wiregrass, but uh, Philip's going to try to keep an idea of scores around, especially regional playoffs. Well, for Philip and I, Coach Kennedy, we appreciate you listening to tonight's Jed Kennedy Coaches Show presented by Property Champions. Hey everybody, this is Stephen Holland. And this is Tyler Kent. With Property Champions Real Estate. And we're here along with you all to show our support for the Dothan Wolves and wish them great success on a winning season. Just as they pursue a championship, we're here to provide championship results with all of your real estate goals. So you can call or text me, Stephen Holland, at 334-797-0134. Or me, Tyler Kent, at 205-413-2304. Go, Go Wolves! wolves.